We're here at Sun and Fun where we finally got a chance to fly this bird right behind me. This is the Glass Air, uh, Glass Air Aviation Merlin and it's their Special Light Sport Aircraft Entry. Uh, this is actually still a prototype airplane. Uh, this particular one, they are starting production on it now. They've finished all their testing and have done a lot of the work that needed to be done in order to get that approval and they're now ready to start the wheels of production in motion, you might say. But let's have a look at it here. As you can see, just generally, it's a shiny, slick airplane. The whole surface is composite. Uh, there's a steel structure in various places on the aircraft, but the main structure is composite on it, and it looks like it from its gentle, curved lines. So starting up front, good old Sensenik prop here, right from here in Florida, just a little bit that way behind the camera in Plant City, Florida, is where these props are made, a fascinating facility. Uh, that is uh, sw being swung by a Rotax 912 engine behind it, the 100 horsepower Rotax. So that keeps this, uh, helps keeps this airplane light. As I move back here, I'll look down at the nose wheel. The nose wheel is a full swiveling nose wheel, so, and it is not steerable nose wheel. You steer by using brakes, and that makes it very maneuverable. If you stand on a brake hard, the airplane just about pivots, but as soon as you get a little bit of speed move, movement on it, you back off the brakes and just start using the rudder pedals to steer the rudder on the airplane and use aerodynamic steering after that. So coming back to look at the, uh, I'm going to lower the doors down just a little bit here. I won't even close them, but gull wing doors. Uh, the, well, I can go ahead and do it here. You bring the latch all the way forward like that, and I don't know if the camera could hear that or no, the microphone could pick that up, but there's a, a latching in it. Then you come back, and that's all nice and smooth here, too. There's a lot of that kind of detail awareness. And then to uh, get it the rest of the way, you go down like that, back into position again then, and then you can bring it back open. And a gas piston strut on the back there holds it open for you, so it's easy to get in and out. To get in the airplane is very simple. Just get in, put your rear end in, pull your legs inside. Uh, I had to pull my legs toward me a little bit because the forward opening here is a little bit tighter than it is on some aircraft, but it's not a big deal. And once you're inside this aircraft, you might be able to see the seat construction here. It's very, very comfortable seating. Uh, obviously, side by side, as you can see, the seats adjust easily in flight uh, at any time you want, and they have a pretty good a range of adjustment. Uh, I'm just about of average height, but I think it would handle someone quite tall in there quite well. Now, you can't really see it too easily, but as I move my hand back up in here, there are two skylights, one on each side, so that when you're turning to the side uh, opposite uh, where you're seated, you can look up through the skylight and see any traffic that might be out there. So that's a nice quality. Big bubble. Uh, canopy on the on the nose here and it comes you can see it comes well back up to about here where my hand is so you've got good upward visibility you got good side visibility uh, the way the doors are positioned and where my head was inside I didn't have to look down like this to see out to the side I could see easily out to the side either direction uh, it uses three-point seat belts, so uh, just one that comes over your shoulder, much like in your car, goes down here and attaches there, not the four-point complexity to get in. Now, another interesting feature about the inside of the airplane is that the joystick is uh, somewhat like the, one, the way Cessna did it. It's not identical to Cessna, but what I mean by that is the joystick doesn't come up out of the floor. It comes back from the panel. And so it's a much easier entry then. Your feet can just slide right in sideways. You don't have to lift them up and over a joystick. That's a nice feature as well. So as mentioned, this aircraft um, is, a, uh, pro is the prototype aircraft. Now it doesn't look like it. It's really well finished in here, uh, but you can see inside. It's an all composite, uh, all, the, all the interiors are the same, ex the same as the exterior. It has a nice carpeted floor on it, which dampens the noise a little bit. Uh, but uh, uh, this aircraft is going to go through a few changes. I'm going to point out one thing that I recommended to them since it's right in line with the camera. Here's the throttle, and if I were to be seated in here, you can see that, that that position of the throttle is kind of back on my hand. It's actually a little far back, and there's a place up here you might call the iPhone holder because that's what everybody has and puts there. I think they should swap these two, honestly. Put the iPhone holder back here, put the throttle up front. Then it would be much more convenient. Uh, that's a decision, of course, they'll make, but that would be one recommendation I had to them. Another one that is a little different, I got to like it quickly, but it's not standard, and that is the flap activation is right here. These two buttons that my fingers are, my two fingers are pointing toward, flaps up, 
flaps down. It actually was very easy to operate, but most pilots are used to having other things there and might not adapt to that, or they think they're not going to adapt to it, so I suspect that will be changed as well. Um, push to talk on the front, and up here this, can, this uh, coolie hat it's sometimes called is a, uh, uh, a joystick type switch on the joystick, uh, operates the uh, elevator trim. Okay, then in the center here you see a fuel cutoff. In this particular airplane, they just, it's room, here's a, there's a panel over here if the camera can show it, there's room for a second screen if you wanted a second screen. But of course, in the sky view, you really don't need dual screens. And I think they said they were going to go to the advanced flight systems, which is now a company owned by the Dynon Avionics, Avionics Company. Uh, it's close to them up there where they produce this thing in the northwest of the U.S. And so I think they're going to switch to that. But this one had the Dynon Skyview Touch, which, as we know from previous uh, videos, has everything you want on it. You notice there's not a round gauge to be seen anywhere in this. Now, this aircraft uses the IS engine. So right here in the center, here's your lane A, lane B switches. And off to the left over here, if the camera can see this, is a green start button. So they're using sort of the new technologies that we've seen on these more recently. Um, after you uh, uh, get the switches for the, the rest of it set up, press the start button. And as usual, like with, with all Rotax engines, I think ever, it just starts up very, very quickly. And then when you do your run up, most, mostly again with the IS engine, the run up is another exercise to make pilots feel comfortable. In fact, the computer on the engine, which is loaded with sensors and whatnot, it's basically checking it, you know, a thousand times a second or some some incredible pace, well beyond that which a human can do. The exercise of turning lane A and lane B lights off is mimicking what we have done for many years with magnetos. And my gentle prediction is that at some point in the future, they're just going to get rid of those because basically the engine's checking itself so often. You don't really need that. It's mostly for the pilot's comfort. Radios and other features are mounted in the panel as well. So I mentioned about the seat comfort. The uh, right, my hand right here is on the uh, strut that moves the uh, seat back and forth, and you can see how easily I'm doing it here, even though I'm reaching across the cockpit. Very easy. Uh, seat belt comes across here like this, latches down into a single latch, which you can see right here. One of these, just like on every airliner in the world, so you already know how to do that. And um, in every other way, the air press is quite comfortable. There's one other nice feature here. If the camera can see it, I'm going to reach up. And there's a handle up here, which uh, if you wanted to hold that while you adjust the seats or just to help yourself in the cockpit, nice sturdy handle like you, fly in, like you find in many modern cars. But now let's look at this joystick. You see you, see you have a joystick here, and it moves kind of like a joystick moves. Uh, it comes fore and aft and back and forth, but it, you see it's swinging. It's not leaning like a joystick that comes up out of the floor. The good news is you push that in, there's all the room in the world here to get in and out of that aircraft without having to bump yourself into the joystick. And the throttle being in the center, of course, you're not going to impact that one way or the other. So it's a shared throttle. I mentioned where the flaps are at already. In the back of the aircraft here, um, let's see if I can move this forward a little bit and then you can see back there a little bit better perhaps and maybe not but anyway there's a the, the equivalent of a hat rack back here but this is marked uh, for 50 pounds of weight you can put back there there is currently no tie downs back there that's something that they're going to need to add as well because if you put something back there there's nothing to keep it back there right now when um, uh, dan flew the airplane out here he flew all the way from washington from uh, um, uh, oregon out here to uh Sun and fun, and that's up just about as far across the country as you can go. I suspect he had a lot of his stuff over here on this seat or down on the floor or whatever where he could secure it and get at it while he flew because he flew it out here solo. So uh, this airplane, it's marked. I'm looking back at the camera right now. This one still says experimental on it. They have won their LSA, uh, SLSA approval on it. They use this aircraft as the example, but it's certainly going to go through a few changes. So let me come on back outside the airplane again, and we'll talk a little more about its flying characteristics. All right, so let's talk about the airplane a little bit more now. I want to come back here a little bit. The camera can uh, just stay where it is, and I'll go behind the uh, tie down here. I want to point out where fueling happens. Here's where the fuel inlet is, and that's an interesting thing. There's 20 gallons of fuel, according to the test pilot, but uh, we're going to see a total of 24 gallons capacity in this airplane. As mentioned earlier, this is a prototype. There will be a few changes to this. So let's talk a little bit about its flying characteristics. And relative to changes, uh, there are some adjustments I'm sure they will make. 
This particular propeller, because it was flown all the way diagonally across a very large country, they have the pitch set on this Sensenik prop for cruise. That made it a little long on its takeoff run. Uh, and that's an adjustment they can make later. And they're still experimenting with the use of flaps to determine exactly what the optimal thing is. So there's going to be a little more investigation of that. And what I experience is a sort of a long takeoff run, I think, will be solved in the future. That's about the only thing that I could say that is uh, the least bit uh, requiring a change to it. Because in every other way, this airplane was beautiful to fly. The control pressures were wonderful on it. The harmony between the joystick and the rudder pedals, also very good. I was able to do my Dutch roll maneuver, which helps me learn about that harmonization of control very easily and almost right away. Uh, as I made ser a series of maneuvers that I typically do, uh, 90 degree turns just to begin to understand it, then I do S turns across the road to see how well, not because I'm evaluating my own skills on that, but to see how the airplane responds when I do those things. And finally, I always do a set of steep turns, especially in the steep turns. Sometimes that can be a little more demanding because uh, the aircraft will require a liberal amount of power. You have to come back on the trim so that you relieve your back stick pressures. In fact, the steep turns I did in the uh, Merlin, uh, I didn't do hardly any of those things. I did add a little bit of power because we're going to be at a 45 degree bank. You're going to need some more power, but I don't remember moving the trim at all on it. And it's that light and nice and control pressures. Because it's light does not mean it's twitchy, though. I actually think this can be quite a good flight school airplane, uh, one of its good attributes. And another way to know that is how it stalls. We did a full regiment of stalls, power off, power on, accelerated stalls in each direction. And no matter what I did, the results were very, very good, very benign, very relaxed recovery from the stall. On one of the most uh, aggravated stalls, we got a little bit of wing drop, and I mean only maybe 20 degrees of wing drop, which stopped right away. Every stall I did was full stick back and held back. I did not release the stall, the stick back pressures during stall and it just kind of went into sort of a mushing flight. The slightest relaxation of that back stick and the airplane jets forward very quickly. That slipperness I mentioned earlier comes into play and the aircraft was quickly back to speed. I never used any power on any stall recoveries. So there's a lot of very nice things to be said about it. I did, uh, I think, four landings in the airplane. Every one was acceptable. Uh, two or three of them were really quite good as if I had flown the airplane before and. Yes, I've gotten to fly a number of airplanes. I'm a lucky fellow that way, but it's not because my skills are so high. It's because this airplane is a great landing airplane. Some of the great qualities I can say about it are that. Uh, we did use full flaps on all landings, and the, uh, the adjustment is infinite. Uh, so they're electric flaps. They are not pre-positioned, so you can have any amount of flaps you want. There's a very clear indicator on the Dynon Skyview. Uh, showing 15 and 30 is what the indicators are. You can have any you want, but we use 30 degrees on all landings. They were slow, they were easy, the touchdown was great. Okay, let's talk a little bit about why you're operating the aircraft relative to its speeds. Uh, VR speed is um, 45 miles an hour, 45 knots, excuse me, and uh, 45 knots back stick and the airplane leaves the runway. Uh, best climb, I believe, was at 60 knots. Uh, best angle of climb that is, best rate of climb I believe was uh, 65 and flaps down speed is 70 miles an hour, 70 knots. So in cruise, the airplane, now remember this had a cruise pitch prop on it. Uh, we were seeing uh, between 110, uh, about 110, but we were at a low altitude. Get it up at altitude a little bit and I'm told it'll run better than uh, a run up to about 115 knots. 120 is the maximum it can go. Uh, stalls I mentioned, they're very slow. They're very benign. They happen at about 39 knots. That's what the factory indicates. And uh, that seemed to be about my experience as well watching it. All right, so I hope I've answered most of the questions about the new Glass Air Merlin Special Light Sport Aircraft. If you want more information, if you want to place an order, if you want to talk to somebody from the factory, go to glassairaviation.com. You can find more about this particular airplane and more about all kinds of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for coming along with us to fly the Merlin SLSA here at Sun and Fun.